and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Bridge. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Holly Walsh and Hal Cruttenden, Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Holly, which category would you like? Um, politics, please. Okay, your category is politics. The answer is 5P. What is the question? Is it how much does it cost to hire Peter Andre for your wedding? <laughs> <laughs> is it what is the average house price in Fukushima? <laughs> <laughs> Will be for many years. <laughs> is it what is the famous five book called where they all had incontinence? <laughs> is it? Is it? It takes a while to get that one. <laughs> It's a really blood title, isn't it? 5P. It is. <laughs> is it what is not worth bending over to pick up in prison? <laughs> is it how much money would I have if I had a pound for every time I failed a maths exam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it, after the years of austerity, how much have they actually reduced the national debt by? <laughs> <laughs> is it what is this week's rollover in the Greek lottery? <laughs> Is it, is it just simply how much does your mum charge? <laughs> is it how much you should tip a stripper to really annoy her? <laughs> I find any coin at all. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it annoys them even more if you take your credit card and try and slide it. <laughs> is it what was the antique expert's valuation of the small silver disc I found down the back of the sofa? <laughs> Okay, uh, no, we need to... Oh, right. I, I, know, I know what it is, I know oh, what it is. Oh, God, is, yeah, go yeah. on, what are the chances? Is it what, uh, <laughs> what, what are a million nectar points worth financially? <laughs> <laughs> How much is a Ryanair flight from Stansted to Dublin? Minus the £200 charges. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we need the answer. Okay. Genu 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 okay. Genuinely. Genuinely. Yeah, genuinely no, no, the answer. They're, they're I'm mean. with you. Yeah, go on. Is it how much the Lib Dems are going to try and charge us for plastic bags? That's exactly what it is. Thank you very much, Andy Parsons. Yes, the question I was looking for was, as announced at the Liberal Democrat Conference, how much will supermarkets have to charge customers for a plastic bag after the next general election? This is the news that at his party's conference in Glasgow this week, Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg unveiled plans for supermarkets to charge five pence for a plastic bag from 2015. I'm a bit down on this as a news story because I was under the impression this has already happened, given I'm constantly asked if I want plastic bags. Yeah, M&S have been charging five pence for a plastic bag since 2007. You're wondering what other policies are the Lib Dems going to nick off M&S? <laughs> <laughs> in M&S, though, they do. It's not fair in M&S because in M&S food hall they charge you 5p, but if you go and buy a pair of pants, the bag for that is free. They just give you a bag. So if you're prepared to buy pants, then go shopping, <laughs> you get a free bag. If you walk yourself out of the food hall and then ring yeah. it up at the if counter... if you're prepared to stack salad and pants in the same bag, <laughs> completely free. It's just a little tip. <laughs> Do you think the fact we're sticking on M&S so much, talking about it, does show how middle-class this yeah, program is? Yeah, there is a tendency. We're probably alienating people here. We've got to think about the people who, who haven't paid for bags. Lidl. I mean, people... Who, you go shopping at Lidl and you have to pay 5p for a bag, that's doubling the cost of your shop. If a little of suddenly they've moved into the next gear, haven't they? Because, you know, you've got uh, Tesco's finest, you've got Sainsbury's Be Good Yourself, and Little have now, to compete with that, brought out their new less shit range. <laughs> <laughs> People need plastic bags, though, to pick up dog poo in the park. I mean, there are alternative methods, but you don't want to have to carry a golf club around with you all the time. <laughs> 5p is a rip-off for a plastic bag. I mean, it costs a quid for a trolley. And I've got loads of them at home. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does seem a lot of money for something you're just going to use once. But uh, you can say the same about cruise missiles. <laughs> the thing is, though, know, the Lib Dems have got to try something, haven't they? Because their current popularity is 11%, ha half down from what it was at the last general election. And you think we're still missing a trick, though? I think when anybody asks you in the street who you're going to vote for the next election, I think everybody should say the Lib Dems, right? And then when it comes to the election, nobody should vote for them. And then when Nick Clegg goes, all oh, but you promised us, <laughs> we can all go, yeah, now you know how we feel. <laughs> <laughs>
Have you been following the conference and what's been said at the conference? Yeah, I've been following the bits. Uh, yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? Mm. Well, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting, obviously. Yeah. You know, they it brought Grand Theft Auto out this week. But anyway, let's go back <laughs> to the Lib Dem. <laughs> what has the Lib Dem Home Office Minister, Jeremy Brown, said about Romanians and Bulgarians who plan to live in the UK? He has likened them to people, to expats who go and live in Spain and British people. And, and then immigrants are not the same as British expats, because immigrants eventually learn the language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the difference. <laughs> yes, 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 and them coming over here is the same as people from here going over there. And yeah. got them furious because, as we know, <laughs> there are two types of people, us and foreign. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I'm saying that while I'm foreign. Uh, so. I've got a holiday home in Romania uh, and Bulgaria and Turkey. It's a caravan, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it is, there is a difference, though, isn't it? Because there's obviously a difference between British people who are living in Spain. Yeah. and Because unlike the Romanians coming to Britain, the Brits who are living in Spain, they're not going there to earn money. They've already earned their money in Britain, and they're going over to Spain to try and hide it from the police. Aren't they? <laughs> 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 yeah, a lot of the comments were like, how dare they? Because as we know, some of these people are criminals who are coming over here. Mm -hmm. And there's no tradition of that in the cost of their crime. In other news, what has Andy Murray done to raise Britain's tennis hopes this week? Oh, well, he hasn't killed Cliff Richard. Uh. <laughs> My suspicion is he's been playing tennis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he's won uh, won us the Davis Cup, so as we're now into the not the Davis Cup, but he's no. won the, the the sort of round match, so as we're now into the World Group. Yes, you it's are. It's the first time we've actually uh, won a match to get us into the World Group since 1986, apparently, My when God. Andy Murray was only one, and he wasn't in fact in the team because he was only ranked number five in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's unfair though because he's by far the most successful person in that whole group. Like, mm. if they were the Beatles, it would be John, Ringo, Ringo, and Ringo. <laughs> I, I, think, you know, I think if you were to ask Andy Murray, for example, how he feels about the, uh, the, uh, the victory, that he would say that the other players also contributed a great deal and he's very proud to be part of that team. Well, we could do that. Andy Murray, how are you? Good to have you back in the audience of Mark Curry today at this day. <laughs> Andy, congratulations on this, you know, partial doorway into success. Uh, obviously a team effort, <laughs> would you agree? It was, yeah. Yeah, there we go, right? <laughs> yes. Also, and also, since the last time he's on, he has won Wimbledon, so massive congratulations. Uh, it's, yeah, he's won absolutely. the US Open Wimbledon and a gold medal. Yeah. Uh, basically, he came to this show with nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sat in that golden chair and has won just, it's been spectacular. Congratulations, what? very well done, sir. Yeah. Very, very, very. Well. I can't pass this opportunity up with having, you know, such an incredible person in the Don't audience ask him out. He is without taken. no, without asking. <laughs> Kim, how do you have such incredible hair? <laughs> <laughs> Kim, Kim is not Mike, but Kim will laugh yeah. embarrassingly. <laughs> uh, in a way, that, that indicates you. Yeah. Uh, when is when is the next round of the Davis Cup? Either? When is the last sixteen? January. It starts in January, yeah. and is it run? Is it one big tournament, or does it, or does it run? Is it dotted through the year? Uh, depends. We could lose the first match and then we don't play again, or we play like every three months, basically. Okay, great. I think it's good to be positive, don't you? Yes. <laughs> but we're only going to have it for a few months because if Scottish independence happens, we're out the Davis Cup, aren't we? Yeah. I don't want to bring up something controversial and make him feel uncomfortable, but which way are you going on that, Andy? <laughs> well, the, the point is, though, is 31% apparently of Scottish people want Scotland to leave the United Kingdom. And apparently the same survey suggests that 41% of English people <laughs> want Scotland to leave the United Kingdom. Which is why ultimately I don't think Scotland will go for independence, because they won't want to make that many English people that bloody happy. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't you come visit us after you won Wimbledon? We had to play footage of you from the <laughs> last time you were here. <laughs> That's all that episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you think we were like a little you, bit desperate? Did you look at it and go, yes. oh, I, I looked so young then. <laughs> <laughs> did you look at it and go, hang on, I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> was I? Maybe I was there. <laughs> Maybe, did I win Wimbledon? <laughs> he had a few other things to do. I mean, no British male had won Wimbledon since Fred Perry. Fred Perry, of course, a man who died a few years ago but he still managed to retain his position as Britain's number two. So, <laughs> OK. Uh, <laughs> he's in the room. <laughs> 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 he has to work with these people. <laughs>
In other news, have you got GTA 5, by the way? Have you bought it yet? Have you got what? Grand Theft Auto, have you bought it yet? No, but I'll tell you what I have bought. Have you bought a new game? I have bought a new game. Have you bought a new game? What did you buy? What did you buy? I bought Farming Simulator 2013. In the week that Grand Theft Auto 5 came out, you bought... I bought Farming Simulator 2013. And what exciting things can you do in Farming Simulator 2013? You can plough. And you have to, you have to steal the plough from another farmer. It is the most the farmer. laborious, time-consuming, dull, realistic, yet addictive game ever. <laughs> no one is in your tractor. You already own the tractor. You don't have to pull somebody out of it. You get in it, and you have to back it up to whatever tool you have to use and drive it to the field and methodically move it up. And, and then you might find, I've been driving this phrase, and I forgot to lower the plough. <laughs> <laughs> It's fascinating that you find it such a tedious game, and yeah. yet you're talking about it yeah, at yeah. such length. You know, <laughs> and if, if you, especially if you think about it, the fact that I would having, if I've been ploughing without my plough engaged, that I would then think, oh no, I've wasted the last half an hour, like I wouldn't have done if I'd been ploughing. <laughs> <with the plough. laughs> it's still not a real farm. <laughs> Does it have does it have an emotion setting? Can you can you feel more you know sort of get you don't more you don't want to plough angry you don't want to no, plough angry no. all over, you're all over the field when you're you plowing angry. My wife was complaining that it was unrealistic because it goes like fa five times faster than real life. It's like yeah. it was six o'clock a second ago now it's seven o'clock. Go well, but can honey, you get... come on? There's got to be some excitement. <laughs> it's got to be a little bit faster than I actual think, reality. Can you, I think can... the amazing thing about this is you've got a wife. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the point is going to have Holly and Andy. <laughs> now we play a round called Unexpected Item in the Gagging Area. <laughs> this game involves Hal and Milton, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is football. Who wants to come in that? Hal Crockett. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> football, football fans really annoy me, really badly. I, it's the lack of perspective that gets to me. I heard a Manchester United fan on the radio being interviewed about the retirement of Alex Ferguson at the end of last season. And he honestly said, he said, when I heard that Fergie was going, it was like a death in the family for me. And the presenter went, yeah, mate, I understand. <laughs> Not, you emotionally retarded twat. <laughs> England fans, particularly, they bring up the war at football matches. They bring up the war. The last time we played Germany, three years ago, England fans turned up in World War II RAF outfits. <laughs> they sang songs about German bombers. And that stupid band at the side of the pitch played the Great Escape theme tune. <laughs> and we were thrashed 4-1. It was bloody humiliating. <laughs> that's not what people fought a war for, is it? That's a, that's a, there, there weren't generals on D-Day making speeches to the troops going, Gentlemen, today we fight for freedom. We fight for an end to tyranny. We fight for our families and our friends. But most of all, we fight. So that one day... <laughs> Fat, drunk English men <laughs> in football shirts too tight for them <laughs> can stand in stadiums and sing as one, two world wars and one world cup. Do-da, do-da, that's why we fight today, gentlemen. I personally believe that actually male football fans behave the way they do because they use football to express emotions they can't express in other parts of life. That's what's going on. When they are shouting and chanting vile stuff at the ref, at the opposition, at other players, well, what they really want to be chanting is stuff about what's going on in here. They want to be chanting stuff like, I can't express my feelings! I can't express my feelings! I've clinical depression! I need a therapy session! La 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 la! I feel like crying! Feel like crying! Feel like crying all the time! <laughs> Oh, I'm bipolar! That's really... Thank you very much, Alex Very good. That leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've got, Milton. Let's spin the wheel again. And the topic is school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Recently, I went to one of those awful school reunions where everyone's boasting about what they're up to now. I said I work for the United Nations, because uh, I have been UN employed for a while. <laughs> while I was there, a bloke came up to me with a scar on his face. He said, you don't remember me, do you? I said, are you action man? <laughs> he said, no, but I bet if you could go back in time, you'd pay more attention in my history lessons. I said, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't need your history lessons. <laughs> and then he stormed off to teach year nine, uh, which I presume is a tiny part of history. <laughs> my parents were so rich to get me through my history exams, I had my own private Tudor. I loved reading at school. There's nothing like getting to the end of a good book and thinking to yourself, ah, there's Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Those forms to fill in to get to university are difficult, though, aren't they? I ended up spending three years at the University of East Angola. <laughs> My grandfather... <laughs> he broke into a school the other day. He said, if it wasn't for me, you'd all be speaking German. That's right, said the German teacher. <laughs> it is not fair. I never got to do the job I wanted to do. I wanted to be a farmer. <laughs> if only there was some way I could do it these days. <laughs> if only there was some computer game or something. <laughs> That's all great, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Points for Milton, points for Hal. Come on back. Now we play a game called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So this is a photograph uh, taken this week of a recent NASA launch in Virginia. However, we can show that small detail there. Something got picked up in the launch. <laughs> So, geez, what's going on here? It's Boris Johnson. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very, very, very annoying for those French astronauts because their lunch has escaped. <laughs> I just look at that and I just hear, I regret nothing! Would <laughs> 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 you not have lived like this? Would it be a life in vain? <laughs> or is he shouting, is the frog shouting, Neil Armstrong, this is one giant leap! <laughs> It's just that uh, since his breakup with Miss Piggy, there was nothing Kermit wouldn't do to get his <laughs> It's Photoshop. It's a genuine. Oh, really? oh, you say that. I'm serious. I have got yeah. frogs in my garden. Right. Every fireworks night, I don't set off a rocket and get. It's jumped higher than the bloody <laughs> rocket has. <laughs> it's it's just not jumped, Andy. Have you not taken? It's been blown <laughs> into that position by the jets of the. It hasn't gone. Bloody hell, a rocket! <laughs> <laughs> Are you I'm sure sorry. Sorry. The frog is annoying. I it's higher frog. than the rocket. It's the angle. It's a lot closer to the camera. It's, yeah. also, it's not that size. That the not frog didn't go, oh, my God, three, two, legs, don't fail me now. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 the spokesman actually said that it, it's come from, they have, a, like, a pool that the water go, comes from to then send coolant to the engines. He yeah, said in a quote, he said, where the frog's whereabouts now are uncertain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming the frog croaked. Yeah. Oh! No one oh. can hear you, Craig. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> he didn't want to get towed into space. Stop it! Yeah. Uh, perhaps he actually came off the rocket because they used the wrong kind of rivet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like, I was looking at it just thinking, Preston Blumenthal's recipe for frog's legs, increasingly elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what finally left the solar system this week? It Was it the sun? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, almost by definition, we would have to have gone with it. This said the sun, <laughs> I just left. I'm off to Was a distance. Was it all, all hope that the Lib Dems have of a decent performance in the next election? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Anyone else? It Any? was uh, Voyager, wasn't it? Voyager. Voyager 1. Voyager 1, yes. Voyager Vo 1. Voyager 2, the evil twin of Voyager yeah. 1. <laughs> Still remains just slightly behind Voyager and 1. And this was launched 36 years ago, when Bruce Forsyth was in his 70s. <laughs> <laughs>
it has got sounds of the 70s on there, and it tells apparently what the world was like in 1977. So if any aliens intercept it, they'll be able to enjoy Gary Glitter without any negative connotations <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> You know, and when it gets the next sun in 42,000 years, yes. they'll still be repeating this programme on days. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, what might it be too hot for in Qatar? Well, this is the World Cup, isn't it? Yes, it is. They've said that they shouldn't stage the World Cup there in what year? 2022. Right, 2022. So the 22, 2022 World Cup should not be staged in Qatar. Uh, because it's going to get too hot. But you think, is that a bad decision? The IOC are staging the Olympics near Fukushima and that's going to get even hotter there. <laughs> I, 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 just really, I really hope Scotland qualify because that's a team of gingers running out and just exploding. Heat. <laughs> 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 I'm not even convinced up. that by 2022 people are going to be interested in football. I think they're just going to be playing farming simulator. <laughs> <laughs> Stop going on about Can farm <laughs> simulator 2013. Because we must know that other video games are available. Mm. Uh, <laughs> like Grand Theft Auto 5, for instance. What's the, what's the upgrade from the previous year's yeah. farm simulator? Like, what's the <laughs> apparently, apparently there are more dedicated servers online for people to play multiplayer farm simulator. <laughs> Which people genuinely do. There are people running <laughs> virtual farms online Don't drag together. me in! Don't drag <laughs> me in! Uh, I'm in. So uh, anyway, if, you back, if you're driving back to your farm and you see another online player, can you... Hello, John. <laughs> or can you drive a tractor out onto the country road and block everybody on Grand Theft Auto? <laughs> 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 Can I just say, well, I, th I do honestly Sorry. think we should move on now, because uh, Ed's got to get up at five o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played Qatar Farming Simulator? It's, it's, it's incredible, actually. Yeah. It's really just staring at a lot of dust. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about the uh, World Cup being held in Qatar is the first place ever that footballers will go to and be the poorest people there. He's <laughs> 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 just waving cash at the main <laughs> room. Ah, <laughs> look at this, read it and weep. <laughs> The Thais have said, don't they, that they are going to actually create stadiums that are like fridges. But there's a few problems at the moment, because whenever they shut the door, the old floodlights yes. go on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they've only got three stadiums. They're mainly used at the moment for stoning gay people. <laughs> but, they, uh... but they're going to build seven stadiums that are fully air-conditioned. Mm. Fully air-conditioned, vast football stadiums, which kind of puts the whole... Five pence for a plastic bag and issue. <laughs> <laughs> if only we if only there was some way that we could find out what it must be like to be a top class sports person competing in a really <laughs> hot environment. Uh, is, if only there's someone we could ask. No, no, that's not. Uh, <laughs> Is it, is it tough? Is it difficult with the heat and the whole thing? I know you get to stop every three minutes for a banana and a glass of water. Uh, <laughs> but if you had to carry on, if you had to carry on for 90 minutes at a time, like whatever, is it awful? How many, do you sweat buckets? Do you sweat buckets, Andy, out there? Do you sweat buckets? <laughs> but there's a question at the end of that somewhere. I'm not really sure what the question is, but you, we have you here, for Christ's sake. We're going to ring you out. We're going to value for money for you. You're, you're the one that's got a sign show. You should know that. This is true. Touché. Good point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <excellent>. <laughs> The thing was, wasn't it, when, when you won Wimbledon, it was over 30 degrees, wasn't it? Was there a moment when they said, OK, it's time for a warm-up, when you just fancied going, well, bang, all right, that'll do. <laughs> Don't I'm limber. You could bend me over the net at this day. Um, <laughs> I beg your pardon. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. No, that was never part of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I just mean like, I mean, you, you, I've, you. I've now got a terrible mental image going on. I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. I'm back. This is our guest. It's filth. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Again, the at round. The boys go to Ed, Hugh, and Milton. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject <clears throat> is. Lines you wouldn't hear in a blockbuster film. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife. Please leave a message after the turn. <laughs> you're going straight to hell. I think you're going straight to DVD, mate. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Iron Man. You win. You do the ironing. <laughs> Is it a bird? Yes. 
Lord of the Rings, UK version. People come from the Shires to go on a very long journey on the Northern Line to Morden. <laughs> and when they get there, it's shit. <laughs> If you push George W. Bush into that vat of concrete, that sets a very bad precedent. <laughs> ah. Don't take me on. I am Wolverine. And these are my friends, Jolene, Windeline, and Trampoline. <laughs> ah. Gollum, that wasn't the ring I was referring to. <laughs> Would you please get your finger out of my precious? <laughs> Actually, should we just check that Bond is dead before we continue with the plan? <laughs> God, Jerry Maguire, you have me at get in the van! Yoda, have you ever been tested for dyslexia? <laughs> If I come back in another life as a disposable razor, I'll be big. There's something in the tractor beam. Ed? <laughs> okay, next up again. Unlikely things for Andy Murray to think. <laughs> uh, I know his championship point. I could really do with the poo. <laughs> well, at least now when Wimbledon, they'll stop making fun of me on television. <laughs> <laughs> I, Tim, look what I've just won! <laughs> hey! I wonder if my mum's watching today. <laughs> of course she is. She's always watching. <laughs> could break his serve. Or I could break his fucking legs. <laughs> I remember when I used to train. What is that? <laughs> He's in the room. <laughs> so. <laughs> I remember when I used to <laughs> train in Scotland, I was a lot more unhealthier. I used to serve with a potato <laughs> instead of a bowl so I could have lots of chips afterwards. <laughs> I wonder if Kim really likes tennis. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Kim would shut up. Oh, Ed Barney, so funny. So <laughs> when are Athena going to make a poster of me scratching my ass? <laughs> Why do I spend my life <laughs> trying to hit a fuzzy green apple? <laughs> With a snowshoe! <laughs> God, it's great having an enormous penis. <laughs> I think I just saw Ivan Lendl raise his eyebrow. <laughs> that means he's just ejaculated. <laughs> all very well. I wish I was playing farming simulator. <laughs> Venus has the arse, Serena's got the tits. <laughs> oh. oh, that's not going in. Uh, <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, oh. the boys go to Ed, Hugh and Milton! <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones.
Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Holly Walsh and Hal Cruttenden. Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night.